Hey everyone. Hope you're all doing all right. I'm reading through the entire Bible this year, like I do pretty much every year. And I know some people don't like that because it makes reading scripture just another box to check on the to-do list. Uh, sometimes what the schedule calls for you to read that day may not necessarily line up with what you're going through that day, and you don't get a whole lot out of it. And, and I've heard all the objections, and this keeps me disciplined in reading scripture. So I read through the Bible every year. Lately, I've been reading from the books of Second Chronicles and Jeremiah. Now, these books are historical accounts and prophecy, respectively. They detail the last days of the southern kingdom of Israel, which included Jerusalem. Uh, you can Google all of this, but at this point in Israel's history, God is washing his hands of Israel because they had had a long succession of kings that did not follow God, and the people were only too happy to join in. Basically, they gave God the middle finger and said, get lost. And after a few generations of waiting patiently, urging them to change their ways, well, God granted them their request. But God did leave them with a way out. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Well, as you probably guessed, the people of Israel declined that invitation. The Babylonians invaded Israel not once, but twice. They burned down the temple, the palace, and every other important building. And they exiled or killed just about everybody, except for the poorest of the poor, not just in wealth, but in skill. And they only kept them around to work in the fields. Now, this message is primarily for both my subscribers in the U.S. Yes, that's right, I said both my subscribers in the U.S. Actually, I think I just have one U.S. subscriber and one in the Philippines. Hi, Pet Pet. But it, it can apply to people in other countries as well. Uh, we've got a lot of problems here in America. A lot of problems. And in my opinion, things are looking a lot like the Southern Kingdom. A lot of things I read and hear and see that claim to be Christian, uh, they don't seem very biblical to me. I think America has completely forgotten, all but completely forgotten about God, just like the people of Israel. And I don't know if you noticed or not, but more than one nation would love to invade America and burn down the White House and all the churches and kill or exile most of us. Now, I choose to believe that that promise in 2 Chronicles 7.14 can extend to us as well. But first, we have to answer the question, are you one of God's people? Are you called by his name? Because that's who the promise is aimed at. And if you're not sure, well, then you're probably not. So let's fix that right now. In order to become one of God's people, called by his name, in other words, a Christian, it's as easy as A, B, C. A, admit that you are a sinner that you have rebelled against God, and you were, were not, are not, and will not be good enough to enter heaven on your own. B is believe what Jesus said and did, that he was and is God in human form. He lived a perfect life on our behalf and allowed himself to be killed on the cross taking the punishment that we deserve for our rebellion against God. C is confess to God that you have sinned, that you accept God's forgiveness purchased for you 
by the death of Jesus and agree to make Jesus your Savior and your Lord. Now, if you have done that sincerely, if you have prayed that prayer and said, God, I place my faith, I place, I place my trust in you, well then, congratulations, you are now one of God's people. You are called by his name, and you are guaranteed heaven when you die. You have been saved. Now it's time for all of God's people to save our nation. We need to humble ourselves. We need to seek his face, and we need to turn from our wicked ways. So what exactly does that look like? Well, you can start by spending time in prayer. Ask God, Lord, is there anything in my life that is displeasing to you? Maybe what I watch on TV, maybe the websites that I visit, maybe how I spend my money. And then here's the hard part. Be willing to hear what God has to say to you. We have an election coming up, and you can choose to vote or not vote. And you can choose who you vote for. And after that, it's out of your control. And frankly, I'm more concerned about the church than the U.S. election. If this country is going to be healed, one person is not going to do it, no matter how powerful they are. The citizens of the United States need to turn back to God. And it starts with the church. It starts with regular folks like you and me. I'm asking you to pray for the upcoming election. I'm asking you to pray for the United States. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Hopefully we'll see you again soon.